Dear students, <coughs> today we will discuss the transformer on load condition. Trans transformer on load. We know that the transformer is consists of a magnetic core and primary and secondary winding. If you are exerting a voltage to the, the primary winding, keeping secondary open, then the current drawn by the transformer is I0, which is creating a magnetic flux in the core, which is producing a, a constant flux of phi, which linking both primary and secondary winding. Because of this mutual flux, there is an induced voltage in the E1 and E2 in primary and secondary respectively. Suppose if you are connecting load in the, the secondary winding, I'm connecting air load, then the transformer start delivering the current of I2. Because of this current I2, there is a current drawn from the, the source is changing from I0 to I1. Before under no load condition, you don't have any load, the current drawn by the source is I0. However, when if you are connecting a load, the current drawn by the source is now changing from I0 to I1. Then what do you mean by this, the current drawn by the, the source I1, what are the component of this I1 that we will study now. Because of connecting a load in the secondary, I2 is flowing in the, the secondary winding, it is producing its own magnetic flux. The direction of this flux which is opposing the, the main flux produced by the, the primary winding. Therefore, the ultimately the resultant flux is reducing. If the resultant flux is reducing, then the generated voltage in the primary and secondary, they are reducing. Is it not? Because, because of main flux, there is a original value of the induced voltage E1 and E2. Because of the, the flux produced by the current I2 in the secondary winding, which is opposing to the main flux, the total flux in the magnetic core is reducing. Because of that, the induced voltage in the primary as well as secondary voltage, they are decreasing. If the E1 is decreasing, the current drawn by the source is depending upon the potential difference between these two points. If the E1 is reducing, V1 is constant, therefore the difference between V1 and E1 is increasing. Are you getting or not? That is, when the resultant flux is reducing because of secondary flux, the induced voltage is redu reducing, thereby the difference between V1 and E1 or the the potential difference these two point is the increasing. If the potential difference is increasing, the current drawn by the, the source is also the increasing. Thereby, if the load is further increased, then phi2 is increasing. Then the resultant flux further reducing. E1 is further reducing. Then the difference between V1 and E1 is further increasing, thereby current I1 is increasing. It is the effect of the load on the, the primary, primary current. Means the primary current I1 is comprises of two components. One is the current I1, the another one is the current what you are calling is I1 dash. That is the ultimate goal is to make the flux in the magnetic core constant, the phi should be constant. There how to achieve the flux phi should be constant? That you have to nullify the phi 2. Therefore, the current extra current I1 dash which is drawn from the, the transformer that is producing a flux which is equal to phi 2. Therefore, the current which is drawn from the primary that is I1 dash which is producing flux equivalent to the phi 2 so that it is nullifying once again the original flux phi is remains there in the, the magnetic core. Therefore, the current I1 is comprises of 
द नो लोड करंट आई नॉट एंड काउंटर बैलेंसिंग करंट आई वन डैश विथ दिस बैकग्राउंड जस्ट विल ड्रॉ दी द फैक्टर डायग्राम फॉर द ट्रांसफॉर्मर ऑन लोड कंडीशन दैट इज द सिक्वेंस ऑफ इवेंट्स यू हर टू रिमेंबर दैट अंडर नो लोड कंडीशन करंट इज ड्रॉन बाय द सोर्स इज ओनली आई नॉट बट वेन इफ यू आर कनेक्टिंग ए लोड देन इट इज प्रोड्यूसिंग ए flux in the secondary which is opposing a main flux so that total resultant flux is reducing but our object is to keep flux by constant however because of this flux the total flux is reducing because of the flux is reducing the induced voltage is reducing therefore the difference between v1 and e1 is increasing thereby current drawn by the the source is increasing the same uh, things are mentioned here that is when the secondary winding is loaded the secondary current i i2 is set up that is when the load is connected the current start flowing in the secondary winding then the magnitude and the phase i2 with respect to v2 is determined by the characteristics of the load it is this point i want to clear that is the current the phase displacement between v2 and i2 is depending upon this particular load that is if the load is pure resistive the current i2 and v2 they are in same phase if it is a pure inductive current i2 lacks v2 by an angle of 90 degree if the load is pure capacitive i2 is leading v2 by an angle of 90 degree if it is consist of combination of resistance and the inductive reactance in that case i2 lacks v2 by less than 90 degree if it is a combination of resistive and capacitive load in that case i2 leads v2 by an angle of less than 90 degree means the maximum lag or lead of i2 is depending upon the what type of load you are connecting here at the same time the magnitude of this i2 is depending upon how much you are loading the, the transformer if you are loading more transformer current i2 is increasing one is the magnitude of i2 and phase of i2 is depending upon what type of load you are connecting to the the secondary winding the same thing is given here that is the magnitude and phase i2 with respect to v2 is determined by the characteristics of the the load then the secondary current set up its own mm i told you whenever there is a current is flowing in the winding it is producing its own mmf that is magnetomotive force the magnetic magnetomotive force is given by product of number of turns and the current therefore n2 i2 is the mmf set up by the the secondary current so that it is a producing flux phi2 which is opposing main flux and hence its own flux phi2 which is in opposite to the primary flux that is a flux phi which is produced due to i not then the opposing secondary flux phi2 weakens the primary flux phi momentarily for time being it is the total flux is reducing then if the total flux is reducing the e1 that is the back emf or the emf induced in the primary is reducing and for a moment v1 gains the upper hand means the difference between v1 and e1 is increasing thereby the current drawn by the primary is increasing therefore let the additional primary current to balance the original flux phi then the current extra current drawn is called as that is i1 dash is known as counterbalancing current this current is in exactly opposite to the i2 because it has to produce the counter flux means exactly it has to opposing the phi2 so that it has to produce the extra flux such that it is opposing phi2 phi2 is because of i2 therefore i1 dash should be exactly opposite to i2 that is i1 dash is exactly opposite to i2 then with this background just i want to draw the vector diagram for ideal transformer first i am taking ideal transformer then we have to switch over to the the practical transformer 
in the ideal transformer that is v1 is equal to e1 v2 is equal to e2 as such there is the no losses and there is a no drops in the the primary or secondary winding these are the things you have to remember ideal means as such there is a whole, no voltage so there are no losses in the the transformer therefore the net flux passing through the core is approximately the same as at no load means the the flux in the the magnetic core remains the constant and due to the constancy of the core flux at all loads the core loss is remains the same if the flux in the magnetic core remains same then the the loss that is a core loss or iron loss or if also you are called as a no load loss is remains the constant then the flux phi 2 is equal to phi 1 dash that is you have to counterbalance phi 2 with the help of phi 1 dash the phi 1 dash we are producing because of the current in the primary extra current i1 dash the phase of this i1 dash is exactly opposite to i2 therefore n2 i2 that is a whatever the mmf is producing in the secondary because of i2 is counterbalancing by the the primary mmf of n1 and i1 dash therefore n2 i2 is equal to n1 i1 dash if you are finding out i1 dash what we are getting is n2 by n1 into i2 n2 by n1 is nothing but your k therefore the counterbalancing current i1 dash is k times i2 hence when the transformer is on load, the primary winding has two components. One is I0 and the other one is I1 dash, which is in phase of portion to I2 and the, its magnitude is K times the, the current I2. The total primary current is, it is a vector sum of I0 and I, I1 dash. It is not algebraic sum, it is a vector sum of I0 and I1 dash. That I am drawing here for a lagging load. Lagging load means, that is once again, I will come back to the this figure, that is I2 lags V2, that is what you are calling is lagging load. What do you mean leading load? That is I2 leads V2, means it is a capacitive in nature. Then the unity power factor load means, that is the load is resistive at V2 and I2, they are in same phase. Okay. lagging load. Okay, these are the points were discussed. With this, I am drawing a the reference axis. Okay, start with the no load current. That is a no load current. I not lags the the applied voltage V1 by an angle of phi naught. Then I not has got two component. We already discussed this. One is I mu, the another one is I w. Because of I mu, we have got a flux phi. Because of this flux phi, we have got two voltages. I am not shown here E1. E1 is also lying on this same axis. That is, because of the flux phi, it is because of the I mu, there are two voltages they are producing, that is E2 and E1. That is the induced voltage in the primary and secondary. We are taking into consideration it is an ideal transformer, therefore V2 is equal to E2. Similarly, V1 is equal to E1. V1 is equal to E1. Then, the phase of the V1 is exactly opposite to E1. Uh, E1 therefore, I am drawing V1. It is exactly opposite to E1 and E2. Now, we have got a current I0. I told you that because of the load is connected that is a lagging in the nature therefore i am drawing a lagging current means i2 lags v2 the, i told you that is if the lagging load means the current i2 lags v2 by an angle of phi2 therefore what is a counterbalancing current counterbalancing current is it is exactly opposite to i2 and it is k times i2 therefore you have to draw i1 dash it is exactly opposite to I2 and its magnitude is K times I2. Then what is the total current drawn by the supply? It is sum of I1 dash and I0. Then if you are factorially, if you are adding these two, then what I am getting is the current I0. This is how we have to 
then draw the, the vector diagram. Start with the V1, V2 and E2 with a flux phi. Then depending upon the load you have to draw the, the either I2 is lagging or leading or in phase. Then you have to draw the counterbalancing current. Then add I1 dash and I0. Then you are getting the I1. That is the, the vector diagram for the ideal transformer on load. It is for lagging power factor. Then I am going for the leading power factor and the unity power factor both. First I will start with unity power factor. Unity power factor means what? It is V2 and I2 they are in same phase. Start with the same procedure. Draw the current I0 and I0 has got both a component of I, I, I mu and I am not. I am not showing here. Then directly I am taking the flux phi, phi. That is phi then because of this phi there is a E2 and E1 then V1 is exactly opposite to E1 then V2 is equal to I2 because it is ideal transformer. Now the nature of the load is unity power factor. Unity power factor means the current and voltage is they are in same phase. Therefore I am drawing I2 it is in phase with V2. Then the next step is to draw the counterbalancing current. What is the current counterbalancing current? It is exactly opposite to I2 and its magnitude is K times I2. Therefore, I am drawing here I1 dash which is exactly opposite to I2. The next step is add I0 and I1 dash vectorially so that I am getting the, the current I1. This is how you have to draw the, the vector diagram for the transformer on load for the ideal transformer under in the power factor condition. In the next case, what I am drawing here is for the leading power factor. That is once again the same thing. Draw the I0 lagging. Because of that, there is a flux phi. V2, that is E2 and E1, they are on the on this axis. And here V2 is equal to I2. Once again, it is an ideal transformer. Then here the leading, leading load means you have to draw I2 leads V2. It has to leads. What do you mean by concept of leading? With respect to a reference, you have to draw the vector in the anti-clockwise direction. It is become a, a leading. If you are drawing a vector with respect to reference in the clockwise direction, that is called as a lagging. And if you are drawing a vector in phase with the, the reference, then it is called as an in phase or unity power factor. Okay, here it is a leading you to draw in the anti clockwise direction I2, making an angle of phi2. It is angle is the phi2. It is in the anti clockwise direction, therefore, it is a leading current. Next step is to draw the I1 dash exactly opposite to I2 with a magnitude of k times I2. Then effectively if we are adding these two, then what I am getting here is the current I1. This is how we have to draw the, the vector diagram for the ideal transformer under three different conditions. One is unity power factor, leading as well as lagging. Okay. In the next session, we will see the, the trans actual transformer on load in the next section.